after you've wiped down the mounting surface for this gasket, keep in mind that at least on the Adapt Motorsports, these three bolting locations are not symmetric. Um, so make sure you have the gasket in the correct orientation before you stick it down. You're supposed to end up with these three um, existing holes on the metal panel beneath it exposed so that you can bolt the um, so you can mount the standoffs and the screws uh, in there after you put the panel in place. Put the three screws and washers through the mounting holes in the panel. Insert the little plastic standoffs into each mounting hole in the foam gasket. You can just push it in with your finger and it should stay in place. Now slide the panel into place, making sure there are no wires pinched between the panel and the foam spacer and uh, gently drive the screws in all three of them I would say alternating between each one so that the panel goes in evenly and flexes as little as possible and um, tighten the screws finger or hand tight you'll feel when they bottom out and the um, circuit board is pressing against the the standoffs so only only tighten them hand tight don't crank down too hard on them and you should probably be good to go once you have your panel mounted up and all of your individual wire connections cleaned up and ready to reconnect go ahead and start to reinsert each wire connection back into the uh, original fuse locations in this case with this panel you now use a uh, a small hex wrench. This one's a three millimeter for this particular panel instead of a slotted screwdriver like before. Yeah, insert each one back the same way it was. Uh, in my case, I'm going from back to front for no particular reason. That's just my preference. Starting with fuse number 21. Um, putting each one of these in here, finger tight, you know, as much as I can tighten with my finger on this short arm. You don't want to gorilla tighten it too much. And additionally, leave the identification flags on until the very end so that when you um, turn it on, if you need to do any troubleshooting, you can identify what was originally where. Um, I'm about, I've got the first five done here and I'm going to go do the rest of them now. So finally I have everything all connected. It took a lot longer to reconnect than it did to disconnect. Um, but I think everything is back where it needs to be. After you're done, go back and double check all the flags and the um, positions of all the wires just to make sure that you, um, you know, didn't install something incorrectly before you start to put in the fuses. Once you've double checked all your wiring to make sure they're in the correct locations, you can go ahead and mount the uh, fuse panel back on the car using the two screws on top, the screw over here with the standoff and the one down here in the corner. In my case, there was really no need to remove it, but I pointed it out at the beginning of the procedure anyway, in case you needed to remove the panel to get to um, the back side to repair any wiring or to pull on any um, extra uh, wiring in the back so, in, so that you'd have enough wiring length in here to reach wherever the, um, the uh, ends of the wires needed to go. Then at that point you can put your relays back in and you can follow your manual and go location by location and put your uh, correct rating uh, fuses where they need to go. This particular kit had a few um, interesting uh, fuse ratings. Everywhere there was a 8 amp fuse. Um, the kit came with 7.5 amp fuses. So, I mean, not the end of the world. At least they're smaller than, than the circuit and not bigger. So, um, you know, we'll just keep an eye on them to see if if uh, these are close to being overloaded, hopefully not, now that we've repaired 
um, some of these other connections. And also anywhere there was 16 amp fuses, I got 15 amp ones. So again, just something to keep an eye on. Um, I don't know if they actually, if there are 8 amp and 16 amp fuses um, in this style, but um, this is what the kit came with. So, um, and since they're smaller, it's a little bit more conservative. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to go with. So, at this point, I think we're ready to go ahead and uh, put the negative terminal back on the battery and um, turn on the LED here so we can see all the um, LED circuits light up and then we can start testing individual um, electrical things to see if, um, if we did a good job or not. One last detail before we hook the battery back up. The, the fuels panel cover has these three hooks on the bottom that engage into these little loops at the bottom of the, um, the fuse panel mount, right there. So you may need to m move some wires out of the way so that uh, there is enough um, space and clearance for the cover hooks to engage properly when you're taking the cover on and off. So uh, make sure you reroute any wires and move them out of the way so that they're not getting in the way of the uh, cover installation. All right, here goes nothing. Very cool. See those LEDs over there? That tells me that those last few circuits are live, even with the key off. Let's see what happens when we uh, open the key. So I ran around and did a quick check of everything. My uh, lights, fog lights, blinkers, hazards, um, wipers, and uh, everything that worked before still works. And uh, all the lights got a lot brighter with no um, lighting changes. So that's great news. I think uh, I think overall we're in we're in good shape. Um, another thing to note is that. This panel, all the LEDs, this tells you that all the all the green circuits are live and have uh, uh, good fuses. This one is live, but um, does not have a fuse in it. This is my uh, license plate lights, which I know are not currently um, wired up. So I know this fuse will blow, so I didn't put it in. Looks like this is... I think this is the fog lights and it looks reddish greenish but it's actually green it's 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 working my fog lights are working so um, overall we're in good shape additionally when the car is off you can turn off the LEDs so they don't drain the uh, the battery Super happy with this thing. Let's see if it'll if the car will fire up. Car fires up. Looks like we did a good job. Now it's time to install the small panel on the back. Here's what the fuse panel looks like with the cover installed looks 100% stock and actually better than it did before with the external headlight relays which were hanging off of the corner here with extra wiring of the battery. So it looks, it's back to factory again. Um, I ended up leaving all of the identification tags and all the wiring. I'm going to leave them on there for some time while I drive and evaluate and you know make sure that there are no 
um, bugs or additional troubleshooting that needs to be done, then I'll tear them off. They're blue painter's tape anyway, so it's super easy to take off. Um, now we can proceed to, we're done here, so cover's back on, I can put all the stuff back in, and now we can proceed to installing this bad boy on the tiny panel next to the engine. Remember to disconnect your negative battery cable once again before starting.